this is about remainder theorem or factor theorem questions and then they tell you that uh, there is a function fx is look like this and then you find that k is unknown that means we don't have the full picture of fx here but however they say that uh, it's given that x minus 3 is a factor so they try to imply implicitly tell you that when fx divided by this polynomial that means x minus 3 then we have no remainder that means the remainder in this case is equal to zero so uh even though there is something called factor theorem basically we are still uh rely on remainder theorem if you forget what is remainder theorem i will suggest you to uh watch the video to explain about remainder theorem first and then from the remainder theorem what they try to tell you is when fx divided by x minus 3 then the remainder will equal to f the original function replaced by a suitable value what is so called suitable value is to make our divisor become zero so in this case so called suitable value of x that means free this is the remainder theorem so uh, if we continue that means the remainder is equal to f3 then we can calculate it by the given function here so we substitute x equal to 3 into this function k something part 3 minus 7 something part 2 plus 2 something plus 3 uh, remind you once again you should write down all bracket first and then you substitute what you want to substitute and don't make any careless mistake here so we got 27k it's not 3 times 3 it's 3 times 3 times 3 minus 7 times 9 plus 6 plus 3 minus 63 and then plus 9 so it's 27k minus 54 here we suspect uh, successfully use the remainder theorem to express the remainder in terms of k but on the other hand, uh, what the question tell you is the remainder directly. So this part, the item remainder by the given information, we know that is zero, because if you still remember, they say that this is the factor, so we just replace it by zero in every row. Uh, you will find out that basically this is an equation with k as the only unknown. So we can continue to lock the value of k. So uh, 27k is equal to 54 both sides plus 54 and then we both sides divided by 27. So k is equal to 2. Then we already solved part A because they asked us what is A. So uh, don't forget our logic is uh, one part, one side is talking about the given information from the questions. The another part, another side is you are applying remainder theorem to express the remainder in terms of K. So uh, because you are talking about the same thing, so finally you will build up equation with K as the only unknown. Then uh, it can be many format. Maybe it's quadratic uh, equation. Maybe it's just linear equation, or sometimes even uh, exponential equation, something like that. Then you just use different technique to solve the equation. So that's all for part A. Then we focus on part B now. Part B, they ask us to find all the rational roots for the equation fx equals zero so uh, don't forget it our focus is we want to solve this equation 
and then if we get all the rules and then we determine whether the rules are the rational rules that we want to find so uh what you should do is before that you don't know what exactly fx is but now you already know k so the first thing is we write fx first so by part a we know that fx is equal to 2x part 3 minus 7x squared plus 2x plus 3 and this is just the preparation work don't forget it your target should always start from your question the question asks you to solve this equation so you should write this one first solving fx equal to zero and based on our finding we can express x fx in terms of like this as a polynomial so we are going to replace the item fx by the given information many students don't know how to start and then they just try guessing or randomly write down something that they think which is related but you should always stick on the question the question asks you to do this of course you should start from this consider this one as your ground and then we find this is a cubic polynomials that means the highest power is 3 to solve any equations with higher power than 2 you have only one choice the choice is factorization You need to rewrite these four separated terms to become one terms, something times something. Then you can use the zero product rules. That means any two things multiplied together give you zero. That means one possibility is the first factor equal to zero. If not, then the second factor should equal to zero. It's because if both of them are non-zero, it's impossible for them to have zero product. So in reverse, in this logic, we use the zero product rules. We can know at least one of the factor should be zero. That's the technique how we solve quadratic polynomial. And then, so uh, we need some calculation about uh, how we can factorize it. This is our graph. Uh, don't write that in your paper. So this is 2x part 3 minus 7x squared plus 2x plus 3. We already know one of the factor because they tell us directly one of the factor is x minus 3. So this is x minus 3. How can you get another factor? It's very simple. 12, I tell you that 3 is a factor. You want to find another. Of course, you will think 3 times something. So you do 12 divided by 3 to get 4. So you know another factor is 4. So what we are going to do is to divide it and then see what is the rest. So divide both, uh, this by x minus 3. We consider the first one 2x power 3 divided by x. So this one becomes 2x power 2. And then after that, we multiply it. This one multiplied by our divisor. 2x power of 2 times x, of course, you get back 2x power of 3. Then the key point is here, negative 3 times 2x power of 2. So we got negative 6x power of 2. And then if you remember, the next step we are going to do is deduction. We remove this part, so nothing left here. And the key point is negative 7 minus negative 6 negative 7 minus negative 6 we got negative 7 plus 6 we got negative 1 and then we just continue we start another cycle compare the largest power negative x squared negative x squared and then divided by x we got negative x so we write down negative x here and then negative x times this one we got negative x squared negative x times negative 3 we got positive 3x we reduce them again uh, deduct them again we got negative x we got positive 3 so negative x divided by x we got negative 1 here and then this is positive 3 
so we get no remainder this consistence with our guessing if you find that there is a remainder that means x minus 3 is not the factor then you have to double check your calculation but now uh, everything is smooth this is 2x squared minus x minus 1 so uh, continue our calculation if you still remember the next step is use the zero product rules if the product of them equals zero that means the first factor equals zero or the second factor equal to zero so x equal to three this is one of the roots we can have more than one root. that means we have more solution to fulfill this requirement to fulfill this requirement so uh and then this part you may factorize it or you use your calculator formula one with a b and c uh, you may use A is equal to 2, B is equal to negative 1, C is equal to negative 1 to get the answer directly from your calculator. Or uh, consider it is a practice of cross method factorization. So x and x are, it must be 2x times something, minus 1 plus 1 here, and then you get 2x plus 1 equal to 0, or x minus 1 equal to 0 x is equal to negative 1 over 2, x is equal to 1. So uh, to round up the whole question, we got three possibility, x equal to 3, or x equal to this value, or x equal to 1, then fx will become 0. Any other x not equal to this number, let's say x equal to 0, do not fit to this situation. So this is our solution, and then they are all rational rules. That means they are all ex able to express in terms of fraction with integers. So uh, these are the answers.